Hey, Mark Munzer here. Welcome to lesson three. Today we're going to talk about sevenths, uh, major sevenths, minor sevenths, dominant sevenths. We'll show you how to construct the chords, how to think about the different inversions, and a couple of little tricks and tips. Let's get to it. Let's look at a major chord, like a G major triad. We talked about how you construct that by looking at the first, third, and fifth notes of the scale. So let's go through that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's your G major scale, one, three, five. So let's talk about how you construct a seventh chord. And let's first talk about the dominant seventh. So the dominant seventh, one, three, five, the dominant seventh, instead of playing the normal seventh in the scale, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you play a flat seven. That's what makes it a dominant seventh. So one, three, five, flat seven is your seventh chord. If you were going to play a major seventh, what they call a major seventh, that's just one, three, five, and the actual seventh, okay, so that's a major seven, one, three, five, and the actual seventh, major seventh of the scale. A minor seventh is gonna be the G minor chord, the one, flat three, five, and then add flat seven. In. So that's a G minor seven. And we'll talk in a little bit about why seventh chords are so nice and why they provide sort of a color that um, is just uh, a little bit more uh, warm than just a standard major or minor chord. Um, but let's first talk a little bit about inversions. So for example, when we play the G, B, D, F, the dominant seventh here, you can essentially do the same thing you do as I taught you in lessons one and two with inversions where you move a note to the top. So there's a seventh chord with the G on top and a seventh chord with the G in the middle. You're just always adding that seventh, uh, flat seventh in the scale. What a lot of keyboard players do though especially on cases where the seventh and the one are kind of like notes right next to each other and it sounds kind of weird playing them together, is often, especially if you're playing in a band, the bass player is playing a G note. And so you don't really need to add that G note into your chord. You can essentially play the flat seven, the third, and the five. And it sounds good. You don't really need that extra G because you got the G in the bass. Okay, so, um, so that's a common way to play uh, a dominant seventh, is to just leave out the root note in, in your right hand chord. Same thing if you're in this inversion. So you don't have to play the G there, because you have it in the bass, so you can just play it like that. The same thing is true with the minor chords. So if you take a minor chord like a D minor, Add the flat seven. There's your D minor seven. That sounds nice when the notes are all spread out like this. But if you play it in an inversion like this, where these two notes are really close to each other, you don't have to play the, the root. You can just play it like this. Um, and it sounds like a D minor seven. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, major sevenths. Major sevenths. So you're just playing the seventh of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's seven, that's your major seven. It has a really kind of sweet sounding um, uh, way of, 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 of color to, to the chord. Um, and again, you can play it this way. And when you play it that way, you don't need to play the root. So you could almost think about it as you're playing an E minor chord, right? An E minor chord but you're moving the bass to a C and it's turning it into a C major seven. To give you an example of where sevenths are used a lot in Grateful Dead music, we'll go through that little segment I was playing at the beginning, which is a piece of unbroken chain where they use minor sevenths, major sevenths, uh, no dominant sevenths in that one, but you'll get the idea of how the sevenths um, add sort of this extra color. So here's a C minor seven to an F major seven, really nice sounding. You can play a D minor seven there, 
you know, E minor 7 to a G. So using those seventh chords, if you played that and you didn't play any of the sevenths, it would sound really boring. So adding those sevenths, gives it sort of that extra nice color that uh, really makes it sound, uh, sound good. I hope you enjoyed lesson three. We'll see you next time for lesson four where we'll start to get into some Keith Gotchow licks.